today's video we'll have a look at solving equations where there's an x or an unknown on both sides of the equal sign. Okay, so grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, I'm gonna have a look at getting, uh, getting started with this. So the first one here is 6x plus 5 equals 2x plus 15. Now the only way we can solve this is when we've only got x's on one side or unknowns on one side of the equation. Now at the moment we've got a 6x here and a 2x here. Now we can we can subtract or, uh, an amount of x's from either side of the equation. So we could take away 2x's or 6x's from both sides to eliminate one of them. But I always just go for the smallest one. Okay, It's just going to avoid having any negatives. So I look for which is the smallest value of x here. And we can just get rid of that from both sides. So I'm going to subtract 2x on both sides of the equation. And once we've done that, you'll hopefully see that this looks a lot nicer. So take away the 2x when we have 4x plus 5 and that now equals positive 15 over there. So I'll just leave that as 15. And now we've got a quite a nice simple equation. We can just follow our normal steps. We can take away the five, and then we're gonna divide by four, but let's have a look. Take away the five, we get four x equals 10. And then dividing by four, and again, four is not gonna go into 10 perfectly, so we'll write it as a fraction. Divide it by four, and we get x equals 10 over four which we can then simplify if we want. So simplifying that, we can divide top and bottom by two, and we get five over two, which we could also write as 2.5, or two goes into five twice with a remainder one, two and a half, okay? So lots of steps there. Uh, the first thing you need to do is obviously just to get the x's on one side of the equation. When it came to this one, the easiest way to do that was just to, to subtract two x from both sides, but ultimately we just wanna get the x's on one side, isolate the x's on their own, and then get all the numbers onto the other side. Okay, and that's what we just need to try on all of these questions now. So let's have a look at the next one. Okay, so this one we've got nine x minus five equals three x plus 13. Again here, three x is the smaller value of x. So I'm gonna subtract 3x on both sides of the equation again. Taking away 3x would leave us with 6x over here, minus 5, and that equals positive 13, so I'll just write 13. Again then, moving the numbers to the other side, it's a minus 5, so we're going to have to add 5, and we get 6x equals 18, and this is quite a nice one here, because 6 does go into 18, so when we divide by 6, we get x equals 3. We don't have to worry about any, any fractions there and simplifying those. Okay, one more before we have a go. Okay, so 2x minus 2 equals 7x plus 8. Now this time the smaller value of x is on the left-hand side. That's fine though, we'll just get rid of 2x. Okay, on both sides and we'll see what we've got. Now when we do this, you've got to be careful because this is negative 2 which is going to be left here. So that's going to be negative 2 on the left and it equals 5x when we take away the 2 plus 8. Okay, so we've got the x's on the right hand side, so we want to get rid of this plus 8. So to get rid of a positive 8 there, we're going to subtract 8 and do that from both sides. Negative 2 take away 8 is negative 10. So negative 10 equals 5x. And then finish it off just like normal, we're going to divide by 5. So divide by 5. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. So negative 2 equals x. Okay, and it doesn't matter which way it's written around, we can just rewrite that if you want. x equals negative 2. And there's our final answer there. So we can have fractions, we can have negative numbers, we can have whole numbers. Okay, but ultimately we just need to make sure we get the x's on one side, the numbers on the other, and then just make sure we solve it just like a normal equation there. So here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's four questions there. Have a go, see what you get. We'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so the first one. Taking away 3x from both sides, then we get 4x plus 2 equals 22. Take away the two from both sides, we get four x equals 20. And then dividing by four, x equals five. Onto the one below, take away three x from both sides, we get five x minus two equals 28. Add the two over, so we get five x equals 30. And then divide by five, we get x equals six. There we go, onto the top right. Take away the 7x from both sides, we get positive 2, so 2 equals, take away 7x from the 9x, we've got 2x minus 7. Add 7 to both sides, we get 9 equals 2x. And then dividing by 2, we get x equals 9 over 2, which you can write as 4.5 if you want, or 4.5, but I'm just going to leave my answer as 9 over 2. There we go. And onto the last one, take away 3x from both sides, and we get 5x minus 2 equals, and you've got to be careful with this because it's negative 17, so equals negative 17. Add 2 to both sides, we get 5x equals negative 15 when you add 2 to negative 17, and then dividing by 5, 
15 divided by 5 is 3, so negative 15 divided by 5 is negative 3. And there's our final answer. Right, there we go. Let's have a look at some slightly different questions. OK, so we've got 6x over 2 equals 2x plus 3. Now, whenever we've got a fraction, obviously, we've got to eliminate this denominator and get rid of that first. So we need to times both sides by the denominator, which is 2. And that's going to get rid of this fraction for us. So we have 6x left on the left. And we, revert, and we get rid of that divide by 2. And when we times this side by 2, you've just got to be careful. We've got to times both of these pieces by 2. So 2x times 2 is 4x. And 3 times 2 is 6. So we've got 4x plus 6. Now we've got x's on both sides again, so obviously get rid of the smallest value of x which is the 4x, so we'll get rid of that, so minus the 4x on both sides, and we get 2x equals 6, and then we can finish that off, we can divide by 2 to find the value of 1x, and you get x equals 3. There we go, there's the final answer. Let's have a look at a slightly harder one. OK, so looks a little bit more trickier, but we're going to take exactly the same approach. First things first, we're going to have to get rid of this divide by 3. So times both sides by 3, and that's going to give us a single line equation to look at. So the top doesn't change, we're just reversing that divide by 3. So 4x plus 1 equals, and then we're times in both of these by 3. So we get 6x minus 6. And then we're just going to treat this just like we did in the earlier questions. So get rid of the smallest value of x, which is the 4. So minus 4x. And that leaves us with 1 equals 2x minus 6. Then we can get the numbers on one side, so leave the 2x where it is. Let's add 6 to both sides. And we get 7 equals 2x. And then we can finish that off just like normal. We can divide by 2. And that leaves us with x equals 7 over 2, which you can write as 3.5 or 3.5 if, if you want. But that's fine to leave your answer as a fraction there. It doesn't ask us to leave, uh, write it as a mixed number or anything. So there we go. 7 over 2 is our final answer. Right, here's some for you to have a go at. OK, so here's two questions. Have a go at these two. Pause the video there. We'll go with the answer in a sec. OK, so for the first one, times both sides by 2 to start with. So we get 3x plus 8 equals 8x minus 2. Get rid of the smallest x from both sides, so 3 of them. x equals, I'm sorry, 8 equals 5x minus 2. Add 2 to both sides, 10 equals 5x. And divide by 5, x equals 2. There we go, and there's our first one. Over to the next one, again, timesing both sides by 2. So we get 8x minus 6 equals 4x plus 6. OK. Subtract the 4x from both sides, the smallest one. That leaves us with 4x minus 6 equals positive 6. So I'll just write 6. Now add the 6 to both sides. So we have 4x equals 12. And then again dividing by 4. And 4 fits in perfectly, so x equals 3. And there are your answers for these two questions. Now before we finish, I've got one more question for you to have a look at. OK, so this question here, we've got a fraction on both sides of the equal sign. So what you could do is you could uh, have a little go, see if you can get the answer, see what you make of it. You could pause the video there, but we're going to talk about it now. OK, so first thing we could do is uh, get rid of one of the denominators. Now, you can actually do something called cross multiplying here, because if you think about what we're going to do, we're going to times both sides by 3, which is not going to change the top of that fraction but it is going to times the top of this fraction by 3. And at the same time, we're also going to then have to times both fractions by 4, or both sides by 4, which isn't going to change the top there, but it is going to change the top of this one. And the process you can do here is you can just cross multiply. So you can times that top one by 3, this top one by 4, and then the fractions will be gone. So I'm going to take that approach. I'm going to times this one by 4 to start with, and that would give me 8x plus 4. And I'm going to times this right, this right one here by 3, and that gives me 9x minus 6. There we go, and from there it's quite nice and easy to solve. OK, now you could have done that in two steps. You could have times the left by 4 to start with, and that for the first step would have given you 8x plus 4 over 3 equals 3x minus 2. And then you could do what we've done previously, timesing both sides by 3. And that would leave you with the 8x plus 4 equaling 9x minus 6, like we've got here already. So you can do it in two steps, but cross multiplying is just a little bit faster there to get through it in a little bit of a quicker pace if you're OK doing that. So from here, take the same approach. We're going to get rid of the smallest x, so minus the 8x. 
and that leaves us with 4 equaling x, 1x minus 6. Add the 6 to both sides, you get 10 equals x, and there's nothing stuck on the x there, so we don't have to divide it. We'll just get our final answer, x equals 10. Right, there we go, and that's solving equations. Again, if you found that useful, if you found it helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe. I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.